Hey everybody, Keith K here, and I'm back today with another Zombie Cure Lab video. Uh, this game is a new game that has a uh, fresh twist on the zombie horde genre. And in this, in this game, we're going to try to cure the zombies instead of kill them. Um, and in today's video, I am going to take you through how to get started. If you're looking for a more detailed uh, tutorial walkthrough, um, I have another video that I'll link to here. Uh, and also, if you are interested in being notified when more of these videos drop, please do consider subscribing. Um, it definitely helps the channel and it'll let you know when I drop new videos. So to get started, we're going to go with a new game. And here it just provides a little background about how there was a zombie apocalypse and there's a remote lab uh, in northern Canada that has developed a partial cure and that we can work with those scientists to develop the full cure. That takes you to uh, the map here and there are a number of different scenarios. Different locations really are just different settings. Uh, so the tutorial is the video I mentioned earlier. This actually walks you through getting started. Sandbox gives you uh, a lot of resources so you can just kind of mess around without a challenge. Uh, for this video, we're going to go with the very easy expedition so I can focus on um, you know, actually showing you how to get up and running without worrying too much about um, getting defeated by the zombies. And so to get started, we just click on this location. It shows us the resources that we're going to start with and the available scientists will have 20 workers in the beginning. So we'll just go ahead and start a new lab. I really like the fact that they've got their roadmap right here uh, in the loading screen. I think that's pretty cool. Love to see more projects do that. And you can see we're, we're here, uh, right in the early release. Okay, and so this is just letting us know that we are in early access, so uh, it's a basic version of the game. There will be some bugs potentially, and play mechanics will change over time. Uh, and this mission is a free play mission, right? So we're not given uh, too many objectives. There are some, there is one right there, as you can see, to get started, we've got to place our main storage. Uh, I always like to locate where the tunnels are first. Okay, so we got one down here. Looks like that's the only one we've got. So I'm going to put that to the north. Uh, I don't think it's necessary, but for some reason north just works better for me. There we go. And let's find a good spot. Ideally near resources, but also not hemmed in. So we could uh, we can expand pretty easily. So actually, I think I'm going to go uh, here. This is a little more centrally located so that as we expand, uh, we'll be kind of equidistant um, away from uh, our base. Um, and also, this does give us plenty of room to expand um, while still having quite a, a large number of resources inside our base. So we'll left click to place that and our border fence will go up. Um, and then we need to place our landing zone, um, which it's usually good just to have, we'll just put it right behind uh, our main storage area. All right, so now we see our traditional three, two, one. All right, now we're uh, ready to go. We see all our play controls are here and the first helicopter is arriving with our scientists. So it's gonna drop them and the resources and they'll get started. So the first thing you got to do is get um, some production up and running. So let's get a resource camp uh, built. Now we do want glow berries and we do want uh, access to all this wood. So I'm going to put this one, put this one here. So we'll let them get started. And we also need a hauling post to be able to move things around. Um, we might want to rotate this one a little bit. Just place that there. And let's go ahead and add a few more workers there. Add, let's add another worker at the hauling post. Now you can see here we've got uh, a number of resources that are blocked and that's because we don't have a gate. So that should be our next priority. Under defenses, you'll find the gate. Now let's just put this there. It's a little bit off center, but that's okay. 
Um, the zombies will be coming from the tunnel anyway, so they'll be funneling in this way. Now, we, need, we do need food and we do need glow berries. Uh, we've got a couple of glow berries in our area. There's a bunch of food and glow berries here, so I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to go ahead and put another resource camp right here. And do four workers. I think that should be enough. All right, so they'll start gathering resources for us. Um, this should give us what we need to get to our uh, first, you know, defensive uh, structure built and our, uh, you know, uh, ability to take care of our people. So a uh, few more things that we need to get out of the gate is a bedroom and a kitchen. So let's go ahead and I'm going to start with the bedroom in the back here. Let's just go 10 by 10. So this is going to tell us that we need 220 wood, which we do have. That's why it's in green. Uh, let's make sure we have a doorway. We'll have one here to connect to the kitchen and one here for them to be able to come in and out of. So now let's get the bedroom laid out. Let's go ahead and get the kitchen laid out. 10 by 10 is another good room size here for this structure. So we're going to lay the first wall across the existing one. Uh, and that should do it there. Let's make sure we've got a door to the kitchen here. And we'll probably have an expansion of some sort. Let's go ahead and put that there. Um, so this resource camp covers this area. I do want to get rid of these trees. So I think we're going to need to build one more resource camp and then we're going to stop there with the resource camps. Let's place this one. I want to save room there for a snowball thrower. So I'm going to put this here where it keeps those glow berries in range. Let's set this to priority so that it gets built quickly. If we go to our main storage, we can actually add extra workers here uh, to get construction done faster. I'm going to prioritize this abandoned fridge. Oh, it's not in range? Yeah, it's not in range. Oh, we're already working on this one. Or that's a transformer box. That's not as important. Um, all right, so this is showing we're short one worker. Let's go ahead and pull one off of construction. Let's prioritize this tree and this tree. Just so that uh, we have space to build other things. Now, we do need beds. I'm going to go ahead and line one wall. Um, so obviously this does help keep up the mood of our workers. And we don't need one bed per worker, but we do need enough beds uh, for folks to sleep in when they get tired. I think we'll go with five uh, and see how that works out. And let's also build a couch uh, so they have an area where they can get some recreation, some relaxation. So that's the bedroom. Uh, we're also going to need in the kitchen to start off with, we'll want a dining table. <clears throat> And that'll be enough for them to uh, be able to, to eat. Let's see. So you see where the feet are. That's where they can uh, sit to use the structure. Sit or stand to use the structure. And you want to leave a row behind here 
like I have a row behind if you saw that so that if somebody sits in this outside seat they don't block the ability of other workers to go in and um, sit down and, and get fed as well um, the other thing is we're gonna need our meat cultivator and a feeding pile once we have some frozen uh, zombies to cure um, but we'll hold off on building that let ourselves build up some resources we can see nighttime is coming, but the first night we don't have any zombies inbound. So we can actually just work straight through. I think what I'll do is I'll speed this up um, and let it run for a little bit. And we'll come back. Okay, now that we've cleared some space away here, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to move this resource camp, first of all, so that we can... Still get these glow berries uh, and also that pickup truck, but it'll give us some room. So let me just prioritize getting that moved. This will free up the space here. We'll still get resources, uh, but what I want to build here is our science room. So in order for us to research the tech tree and develop some of the technologies we're going to need in order to cure our zombies. We're going to need to be doing research. We'll just build another, I'll make this room a bit bigger. Leave some room for defensive structures. Let's go 10 by 12. And to start with, I'll put a door here. Uh, to start with, all we're going to build are research desks. And we're just going to build as many as we can fit across this area here. So we, gotta ha we do need to have that space in between. Otherwise, if somebody is loading resources, they'll block access. All right, so it looks like we can fit four research desks. We might not have enough scientists just yet, but um, I'm gonna let that we'll let that set at four, um, and we'll be able to fill them in as we get more scientists, e either from the moose labs or if we fully cure uh, some of the zombies. All right, so we can see it's starting to get nighttime, but we're not gonna really we're not gonna worry about this because, as it says, there's no zombies. We are going to need more room <clears throat> here. Well, actually, we've got some building room here. Let's see, what is this? Let's get this cleared out, and we can move this if we need to. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up um, and let them collect resources and finish building the science room, and then we'll come back. Okay, now that our research desks have been built, we're going to want to um, make sure that we've got people assigned to them. You can see that they're empty. Let's just go ahead and allocate enough people to do to work at the first two. Um, and the best way to do that is going to be, let's see, yeah, we can, let's free up two, two scientists to work uh, at actual research. All right. And what they're going to do is first they're going to bring over uh, the glow berries that are needed to generate science and then as they work they'll generate science research points down here that we can then apply to our tech tree and the technology we're going to be looking at first um, is actually under production is the bellow breezer so that we can create more ice packs. We do have 825 to start, so we actually can build a defense, a defensive structure that relies on that, but we wanna be able to replenish that um, without having to forage for it. So that's gonna require 50 science. We'll just keep an eye on that. We've got 12 already, so I don't wanna, I could, add more people to this but let's just um, let's see how far they get 
Okay, and uh, it's daybreak. You can see that the next night we're going to get a five zombie attack wave uh, that's marked here on the timeline. So that's not really too bad. It's a regular attack. You can see the next three actually that will come. Um, we'll have a weak attack and then another regular attack. So we do need to have uh, at least one defensive structure built. So let's take a look at what that is. We have the snowball shooter. That's gonna allow us to freeze the zombies. And then we'll be able to bring them in and cure them. Uh, I like to plan to have one on each side here. Um, without blocking the gate. So we'll just put it right here. And you can see where the feet are. That indicates where the operator stands and where somebody has to have access to be able to load the snowball shooter. And they will first build it and then load it up with 60 ice packs. Now, we can see that we uh, need to get some electricity run over there. So if we go to the electricity build menu, we're just gonna run a power pole. And you can't put power pole holes too far away you have to see you know they, they'll turn sort of orange they have to be yellow and have that uh, green line running between them I'm going to try to put this in the center uh, where it's powering this I don't know if that's going to reach let's see but also has the ability to power you know another uh, defensive structure right in front of the gate potentially yeah so that was not close enough even though that's where the operator stands so we're just gonna have to move this a little closer and it looks like one closer that's gonna be just enough to <laughs> uh, not connect it so let's go ahead and make it here let's move this one here and then we'll have to unfortunately run a second one that gets it up close. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant was missing. You can see that it gets highlighted yellow uh, when it's actually going to connect. So I should have paid a little more attention there, but now you know. Um, I don't think this will block. Yeah, this won't block the access to the gate. So that'll allow us to power um, our snowball shooter. And the next thing we want to do is we've got 70 research, so we can go ahead and go to production, ice pack production, bellow breezer. You can see that'll make 2.5 ice pack per hour. Uh, research is instantaneous, which is nice. You don't have to wait for it once you have the research points. Uh, so we'll go back to production and now we see that we have a bellow breezer available to us. Um, so let's go ahead. We're not gonna be able to build rooms down here. So I think this might be a good place to put some of our production. And we can see here there are two areas that need access, free access, uh, one for the operator and one where the ice packs can be removed. Let's go ahead and put that there. So now this gives us production of ice packs. This gives us the ability um, to shoot at the at you know those ice packs at zombies. We can see here we don't have any people assigned. And one way we can do that is for these research sorry these resource camps that are outside of our base. Uh, we can set these to day shift only, and then we can set this to night shift only. Actually, it defaults to night shift only. It looks like this resource camp needs to move already. So let's go ahead and put a move order in. We don't need stone and ore just yet. Uh, this should give us lots of food and berries. So we'll go ahead and do that. The last thing that we need before our first um, zombie horde is the ability to uh, partially cure those zombies that we do free. So if we go back to the science room, we see that there is a treatment chamber one and we have to progress all the way to treatment chamber 
four to fully cure our zombies. They're gonna go through a partial uh, cure process where they are at various stages of a human zombie hybrid or a, a humby. And we'll have to research this uh, cure progress by sending them back to the moose lab, um, which I'll cover in another video. But for today, I just wanna show you everything we've gotta have set up to deal with your first zombie horde. Now, I, I suppose you don't technically need this uh, built the treatment ch uh, chamber for your zombie horde, but um, I think it makes sense to have it just so you can see what happens to them. So I think this happened last time I built this. They need to be able to come in the front here and they also need to be able to put supplies in uh, we're gonna, yeah, we'll do that. Now, if somebody's standing here, they're gonna block that, that one, that station, um, and the actual zombies will go right in the center here. The operator stands over here, and it needs wood and glow berries. Yeah, see, so they'll go to that station to add the glow berries, and then that station to add. They don't need to permanently stand there, so I suppose it's okay. And the last thing we've got to do for this is also get this powered up. Um, now we have some things that will be in the kitchen that will need power, so I have to decide, do I want to just run? Yeah, I won't reach it anyways. Yeah, all right. So since we can't cover both kitchen and uh, science room, I'll just put this here. And that shouldn't block access to anything. And now we've got everything in place that we need in order to get through the first night, uh, freeze some zombies and get them in and get them treated. So let's go ahead and um, hall camp, well it should reach that, okay. I'm going to move this one resource camp and then we'll speed it up until the horde gets here. Uh, one quick thing I wanted to point out before the uh, zombie horde shows up is um, the hauling stations. I wanted to just provide a little more clarity on that. Uh, we, the hauling posts can cover much bigger areas than the the resource stations um, and if you want to ensure that they're bringing resources back uh, efficiently then you may want to build a few extra ones so we'll build one out here to kind of cover this area um, but we'll cut back on how many workers are actually assigned to it same thing with this one let's actually just bring that down a little bit we'll cut the number of folks working there and I think we'll leave that one as is. All right. Now, as nighttime approaches, one thing we're going to want to do is put the lab into lockdown, which will bring everybody that's outside working back inside the fence, uh, in, inside the safe area. And you can see, you know, what's the safe area. Initially, it's just going to be our first base, but as you expand, uh, you know, that will change. So let's go ahead, put them in locked in now, so that gives them time to get back. And then once the sun goes down, we should have two people manning that. And let's also add some people to the Bellow Breezer. And we're sitting at 771. I think that's going to be plenty. But when the zombies arrive, you'll see, you'll see little red dots uh, showing where they're coming from. Okay, here we go. You can see the red dots up top. And those are going to correspond to these zombies here. Slow it down. So they're going to come out of the tunnel. And some maps will have more than one. 
and they'll start attacking the fence wherever they come in but eventually they'll gravitate closer and closer to the gate they are drawn to that now we have our snowball uh, shooter set to attack the weakest target that ensures that it's hitting the same target over and over uh, you could have it prioritize the strongest target but then as you reduce that target strength it'll won't be the strongest anymore so you know you won't get to the point where you've frozen a whole zombie is my my expectation same thing with the closest target um, I think that would lead you to not necessarily bringing one zombie all the way to a frozen state So we'll let this keep going and you'll see that eventually we'll end up with a zombie that is completely frozen. There we go. And it'll move on now to a different zombie. And over the course of a night with one snowball shooter, I think we should be able to get three, maybe four all together. So we'll just let that run. There's not much else to keep track of during this process. Um, you know, we have more workers inside, so we could actually assign some extra people here. There's not much of a reason to assign folks there. Um, and this is going to be important once we turn off the, the lockdown. Um, it's our hauling station that will grab the frozen zombies and bring them over to the treatment chamber. But for now, we'll just wait until the sun comes back up and we can turn the lockdown off. All right, and that's going to do it for the first night. You can see that one almost got frozen here. He's going to go back to the tunnel. This one's trapped, so he's not going to make it out of here unless uh, he decides to leave after we get one of these frozen zombies brought into this chamber here. So let's turn the lockdown off. And let's go ahead and prioritize this one for treatment. You'll see they'll load them up and they'll bring the frozen zombie here to the treatment chamber. And then we'll go through the process of getting him to a, or her actually, um, to a first level of treatment. So now we need to reload this. All right, so we've made our first level one Humby, um, and we need to uh, take a several additional steps to get to the, the level two Humbies, but we're not going to cover that in this video. Uh, we'll cover that in another video. So for today, we're going to sign off. But get this will get you through your first night. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more, uh, please leave a like and uh, consider subscribing. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you back here soon.